Idolatry, when you put something above the one true and living God. In America, idolatry is everywhere. There are millions of different things vying for the love, adoration, and worship of people. Idolatry is a problem that is as old as humanity. What I'm about to say may shock you, but in American Christianity, idolatry is an accepted practice. Don't believe me? Let me show you. TV, movies, YouTube, video games, how much of your life is consumed by these things? The average American spends at least six hours a day in front of a screen. How much time are you spending eating at the world's table? Sure, idolatry occurs in many ways, but in the 21st century, media is very often the most prominent way. And in the 21st century, many Americans that call themselves Christians and many Christians from Western first world countries are commonly practicing idolatry when it comes to what they spend their time watching, listening to, and consuming in media. Now the sad reality is that the majority of what is on TV, what is produced by Hollywood and the gaming industry is totally opposed to God. There is something horribly wrong with American Christianity in that it is very easy to make excuses to watch and listen to the very things that God says are inexcusable. God is not opposed to Christians having fun, taking a break, relaxing, catching up, but he is opposed to us partaking in idolatry and soaking up demonic filth. The issue of idolatry of entertainment and media is one of the biggest issues that is currently being faced by American Western Christianity. All over the world, there are people who are being persecuted for their faith in Jesus Christ, people being tortured in prison, and many times killed even, because they will not deny Jesus Christ. But here in America and other Western nations, many that call themselves Christians think it is torture to have to deny themselves watching the newest shows or movies made by Hollywood. Not to mention how many people spend countless hours playing video games that are full of violence and lawlessness or even occult themes. We have things woefully confused. So today, I must deal with this incredibly big issue, entertainment. Entertainment is one of the most prominent, if not the most prominent ways that Satan gets Christians to erect idols in their lives. Western Christians will often not fight for much but they will fight for their quote unquote right to watch whatever they want. You may say you don't worship entertainment, but that which you pay the most regard to is that which you worship. A study found that an average person in the United States that lives to be 78 years old will have spent 15 years of their life watching TV. Think of that. That does not include social media and video games. 1 Corinthians 10:14 says, therefore, my beloved, flee from idolatry. You cannot give idolatry an inch because if you do, it will lead you captive for miles. When it comes to what you watch and listen to as Christians, you have to be careful and you have to not compromise. We see in Jonah 2.8 it says, those who pay regard to vain idols forsake their hope of steadfast love. Now think about that for a minute. The thing about idolatry is that the more you go to the idol, the more you feel lacking, which results in the more you return to the idol. How many people binge TV shows, binge social media, binge video games? Enough is never enough and that is because the more you go to an idol, the more you miss out on the steadfast love of Jesus Christ. Most entertainment glorifies everything that the Lord warns about in Galatians 5, 19-21 which says, now the works of the flesh are evident, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of rage, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you as I warned you before that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now think about all of those things for just a minute. How many of them are constantly filling everything that Hollywood puts out. You see, if the devil can get you feeding off of storylines, visuals, and anything that glorifies the works of the flesh, he has a much better chance of tempting you into committing those very works of the flesh. Entertainment conditions and programs the mind. Sadly, there are even Christians that will sometimes make excuses that they can watch demonic filth 
and that they can do so analytically without being affected. But that's not the truth. It's a total lie. Because the Bible says in Matthew 6, the eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness? No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. So I must ask you this question today, what is filling your mind? Is it the light of Jesus Christ or is it the darkness of the world? That verse I just read says you cannot serve God and money. But today we can really accurately say that you cannot serve God and entertainment. You cannot serve God and television. You cannot serve God and YouTube. You cannot serve God and Hollywood. You cannot serve God and Xbox or whatever gaming system that is out these days. Am I saying that you can never watch a video or a movie? No. The issue I'm dealing with today is that so often the videos, movies, games, and TV shows that are watched are vehicles for demonic ideas to be planted in people's minds and hearts. And God does not want you partaking in any of that. We're living in a day and age where everything on the TV has an agenda. All the Hollywood studios have an agenda. Even the news stations have an agenda. What is the agenda? Is it to lift up the name of Jesus Christ? Is it to get people to see there is only one hope for humanity, Jesus Christ? No, the agenda is to get people's minds thinking of anything and everything but their need for the Savior. The agenda is to get their minds thinking about anything but their very real present problems to keep them from thinking about their guilt, their shame, and their condemnation. Most entertainment is designed to keep people stuck in the prison of their lives. We're living in times where some Christians will even go so far as to say that they need to watch and be tuned in with filthy and pornographic shows so that they can better minister to the lost in the culture and know how to relate to them. The sad reality is that this is just a convenient excuse to watch what they want to watch without having to admit to themselves that they want to see violence, dark storylines, worldly intrigue, and lawlessness. You cannot live the Christian life and be in bondage to worldly and ungodly entertainment. If you love the Lord Jesus Christ, cursing should revolt you. Gratuitous violence should revolt you. The confusion of marriage should revolt you. Pornography and sensuality should revolt you. Philippians 4, 8 says, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. I can tell you how deep the idolatry goes in American Christianity. I was once at a service and the pastor was trying very hard to make a case that there was a justification to listen to Eminem, a very flagrant and unclean rap artist. God sets the standard of what is true, honorable, just, pure, lovely, and commendable, not the culture. There's never an excuse to look to the culture, the ungodly culture, for those things. The Lord is calling his people to purity. Isaiah 25 11 says, depart, depart, go out from there, touch no unclean thing, go out from the midst of her, purify yourselves, you who bear the vessels of the Lord. This is not a suggestion from the Lord, it is a command from the Lord. This entire topic is something that mainstream Christians don't want to be addressed, but it must be addressed. Entertainment is the golden calf of Western Christians. You may say, really? Yes, it's true. The only reason you cannot see it is because you're in the middle of it. This isn't just an issue for church attenders, but it's also an issue for the highest levels of ministry and ministers in America and Western countries. I have known pastors compromising for Hollywood, willing to watch HBO shows that were filled with violence, profanity, and nudity because they were intrigued by the storyline or claimed they needed to watch to see what the culture was being interested by and influenced by. That is unacceptable to the Lord, and it grieves the Holy Spirit. It has been said that entertainment is the devil's substitute for joy, but in 2022, it is even more than that. Entertainment is the devil's snare. Just think about 
how many people avoid their lives through entertainment. If someone is depressed, they watch something. If someone is having relational problems, they watch something. If they're bored, they watch something. If they have marital difficulties, they watch something. So many people are ensnared by what they watch. They can't stop watching every new show that comes out. They can't break away from the TV, smartphone, or computer screen. And the saddest truth in discussing all of this is that many Christians are just as ensnared as those in the world. Entertainment comes from the old French word entretenir, meaning hold together or support. It had to do with keeping someone happy, and from there it came to mean to amuse or distract. The devil wants us distracted. He wants us amused and unproductive for the kingdom of God. The kingdom of the world is opposed to the kingdom of God. The world system is shown in scripture to be erected by Satan, and it's meant to control people, to distract them away from the things of God. What does the Bible call us to do if we're Christians? In Revelation 18.4 it says, Then I heard another voice from heaven, saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you take part in her sins, lest you share in her plagues. Come out of the prison of worldly entertainment that Satan has erected. Live in the liberty that Jesus Christ intended for you when he purchased you on the cross with his own blood. The Bible says in 1 John 2 verses 15 through 17, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and pride in possessions is not from the Father, but is from the world. And the world is passing away along with its desires, but whoever does the will of God abides forever. Is all entertainment wrong? No. Loving entertainment is wrong. Notice the verse I just read. Do not love the world or the things in the world. You cannot love entertainment and have the love of the Father in you. Let that sink in. Most of the entertainment that is made today glorifies sin, glorifies sex, glorifies violence, darkness, and every unclean thing. Witchcraft is prevalent even in children's movies. There is a clear agenda to redefine God's definition of marriage. They don't even hide it. Producers and companies flaunt it. Are you being desensitized? Can you even feel the Lord's heart about all of this? I know this is challenging, but it has to be said. The Lord made you to be more than just a consumer of every entertainment idea produced by the world. The longer you let yourself stay ensnared by media and entertainment, the more compromised you will become. The Lord never gave room for compromise concerning sin. In Matthew 5.29, he says, If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. For it is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body be thrown into hell. Cut ungodly and unclean entertainment out of your life. You cannot say that you want to serve God and be feeding at the devil's table. Everything that Satan offers, no matter how good it looks or tastes, is always poisoned and will lead to death. Don't go down the path of least resistance. Choose to obey. Psalm 101 verses 2 through 4 says, I will ponder the way that is blameless. Oh, when you will come to me, I will walk with integrity of heart within my house. I will not set before my eyes anything that is worthless. I hate the work of those who fall away. It shall not cling to me. A perverse heart shall be far from me. I will know nothing of evil. When you have nothing to do, think about the Lord and his work. Do not set your eyes on anything that is worthless. That word in Hebrew means something that is only worthy of destruction. So the command is to set no wicked thing before our eyes. God doesn't call us to keep up with the wickedness of the world. As Christians, we don't need to know every sordid detail of the world's productions. We're called to be in this world, but not of this world. The thing you must realize is that what you watch and what you listen to actually does reach your heart. No matter what you tell yourself, or no matter how good you are at numbing, it all reaches your heart. Proverbs 4.23 says, Keep your heart with all vigilance, for from it flows the springs of life. Jeremiah 11.12 says, 
Then the cities of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem will go and cry to the gods to whom they make offerings, but they cannot save them in the time of their trouble. Many people go to entertainment and media in their time of distress, but it cannot help them or save them from their time of trouble. Now maybe you're listening to this and the Lord has brought conviction to your heart. There's good news. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. It's a promise in 1 John 1, 9. The Bible wasn't just given to tell us of how to be forgiven of our sins. It was also given to show us how we are to live now that we are forgiven of our sins. In Romans 12, 2, we are commanded to not be conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. It is my prayer that in everything you just heard, that you would let it cut through the chains and the darkness of what Satan is seeking to do to ensnare Christians to idolatry. Let the Lord give you a new mind with new wants, new desires, and new appetites. At the judgment seat of Christ, I can guarantee you that you will not want to see your life being marked by years of time in front of a screen, but rather you'll want to see years of your life being devoted to a life full of the Holy Spirit impacting lives for the kingdom of God. I would like to end this message the same way the Apostle John ended 1 John. 1 John 5.21 Little children, keep yourselves from idols. So if you have been asleep and in the idolatry of entertainment, I want to challenge you. Now is the time to wake up and to be free and to pursue the life that God has for you. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, saith the Lord which is, and which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus.